So yeah, block if you've got one, but you don't need it to start off with. And um, we're starting on our knees. So if you need extra support under your knees, then finding that. Hopefully you can broadly see me. I know I'm suddenly quite a long way away, but I think you will know where we're heading. Okay, so welcome. We've got uh, six weeks, but we're not here next week. Yeah, so it's six weeks, but over a seven week period. And we're looking at the idea of um, at three challenges. So there'll be a challenge. Um, each challenge will be over two classes, which makes sense. I, even I can do that calculation <laughs> over the six weeks um, and just see. So it might be something you want to play with. And a lot of what we're doing tonight is around um, lengthening and working with the psoas. So it's this uh, these muscles that come from the top of the hip and come through the body to the back of the um, lower back. So it joins lower body with upper body, really important muscle. Often when we get quite, can get quite weak or quite tight in runners. So always useful to work on that. Okay. So we're gonna do a movement we normally do standing. And what we do with this one is we create soft fists and elbows, up to broadly shoulder level. And then we allow ourselves to open our chest and look up and take the elbow slightly back and down as we open through the chest. And then we kind of do the opposite thing with the spine, which is bringing the elbows together, rounding the back and taking the elbows in towards the, the navel and bringing the chin towards the chest. So just finding your own way of opening up so you get a real sense of uh, width across the front of the chest, shoulders go back and down, and then rounding the back and even tuck the pelvis, kind of a sense of tucking under slightly with the pelvis. And then opening out to get more of a back opening, particularly the thoracic, the upper back we're working on here rather than the lower back. So any discomfort with the lower back, just reduce the opening. And you choose how kind of much you want to kind of work with this. So it might be really easy, soft movement to start off with. And then you might find you've got more space or you might find you've done just too much and you need to back off. So it's kind of a bit like a morning stretch as you open up and then we're just doing the opposite so we can round and just settle the back or any discomfort. So we're moving between and betwixt, not extremes, but opposites if you like. Okay, so one more after this closure. So opening up. Shoulders back down without force, yeah, not force, and we're just allowing opening and closing in towards the centre, towards the belly, the belly might go in, and then relax. So fingers have a shake out, arms have a shake out. Okay, so I'm just going to come to um, the opposite direction just so you can see more clearly from the side body. You can stay where you are. Okay, so. Um, from here, we're just going to see how things are going on with the psoas in the front. So think hip flexors, top of the thighs. They'll work with the quads as well a little bit. So just sitting back on your heels, if you can get down comfortably or work in that direction and just take, come onto your fingertips behind uh, your toes, behind your feet. And so you've got a little bit of pressure up from your fingertips, so you can lengthen through your arms and your shoulders, and then take your bum off your, off your feet, taking the pelvis up a little bit, up a little bit, up a little bit. So you're opening more across the front of the chest. Safest position is chin towards chest, but if you feel comfortable and open, then you can take the head back. But you, you know, if you're at all unsure, just keep the chin close to the chest. And then bum back down, chin into chest if it wasn't already there. And just take um, the hands forward and come into more of a child's pose. So hands come forward, forearms come down, bottom back as far as it'll go, it doesn't matter if it's sticking up, that's just fine. The head will go down, let the head go down, if not, just lean forward. If this is uncomfortable, just come onto your back and take the uh, knees in towards the chest. Okay, just relax the back, the lower back. It's almost like you want to extend through the lower back, sitting bones go down to just relieve any tension there. Okay, just take a couple of breaths. So those could be bigger breaths into the lower back, or they could just be um, a just more conscious breath. And then using the hands to get yourself back onto uh, 
your knees. So this time, it's sometimes easier on knees if you take the knees wide and bring the heels in, yeah? So you probably would have had the knees fairly close together before, but just see an experiment on this second way of doing things. Okay, so there's an option. So sit back again and do as we did before, but you could take the hands forward onto the back of the heels, which will give you a more opening through the chest, more opening through the front of the thighs and the hip flexors and the psoas. So lift the bum up, see how that feels as you pick the pelvis further forward. Then you can start to move one hand towards the heel and then the other hand towards the heel and then take the pelvis a little bit further out. Take the shoulders back, any discomfort in the lower back, just softly come out of this, yeah? And again, up to you what you do with the neck, whether you look up towards the sky or whether you keep the chin to the chest. So it's just see how it feels in the front of the thighs, front of the hip flexors, and take care of the lower back. So if the lower back's not good, you come out of this. Okay, so gently, if you take the right hand off the heel, just bring it to the front of the hip, and then take the left hand off and just come back up to, so your knees, your hips above your knees and your shoulders are above. And keeping the knees apart and the toes together, sit back and just come back into the child pose again and rest the back. If you can get down, get down. If you're not happy with coming down, back again onto your back, bring your knees into your chest. And again, just take a few breaths here to try your best to relax any tension in the lower back. And just release any muscles that have kind of started to tighten up in that opening, because we come into an opening very quickly, yeah, there. So for some people that might be too much, if you've been sitting all day at work or been in the car for a while, that might be too strong. So just relieve that tension. Okay, brilliant. And then bring the hands back up. Okay, that's a challenge in itself for most of us, if we're tight in the quads, tight in the hip flexors. <laughs> So you get an extra challenge thrown in this week. So we're going to go down now onto, um, onto our bellies and have our hands, maybe our hands stacked, maybe the forehead on the hands, or if not, just let the forehead come down to the mat and just create a little bit more space if you need it. Just going to adjust the uh, laptop so you might be able to see it more easily, but if you head down onto your belly and we'll take it from there. So allow the back to rest. So you, some people like to kind of rock from hip point to hip point, thigh to thigh, to just kind of almost massage out any tension in the lower back, let the butt relax now. And just notice how you feel, whether you're doing that or whether you just got to, uh, just lie on your belly with your legs extended, how it feels at the top of the thighs around the hips and the hip flexors. See whether that feels spacious, whether it feels tight, whether it was holding as we did those movements and it still feels a bit tight or tense or kind of tender. So just notice the reaction. So it depends on how much you've been running and whether that's a tight area for you. Some people will be fine, other people would have found that really, really strong. Okay, so we're doing something soft. <laughs> so just bending one uh, knee, so the sole of the foot heads towards the ceiling. And from here, we're just circling the uh, whole lower leg, yeah? So it's like circling the foot, the heel, as it hovers round, and that gets into the knee, the thigh, the butt, the hip flexor again, and around the hip. So it's both working with the bones and working with the muscles around that help with the hamstrings a little bit as we just relax as much as we can. If it's not comfortable in the neck, then just take the head to one side or the other side. So it really doesn't matter how big the revolution is with the foot, it doesn't really matter about the speed. You just go with what feels kind of relaxing, freeing, easy. You want a smooth route rather than a juddery route. So if that means you need to do smaller, do smaller, there's nothing the matter with that helpful. What you're trying to do is unwind and relax and release. So anything that you push or you get juddery is going to be tougher. And just wheel back the other direction. Okay. 
and see how it goes in the other direction. Sometimes if you go too fast, the knee just starts wandering all over the place. So you might have to slow down or realign the knee below the hip. Okay, brilliant. So just be still now with that leg, same leg, keeping the knee bent. And just try to get onto the top of the knee, top of the thigh, center of the knee, center of the thigh. And uh, what we're going to do here is just going to give a little bit of pressure through the thigh. Yeah, so it's like you're pressing down into sand with that thigh. And then gently lift that thigh off the floor as someone's lifting your ankle, lifting your foot. So again, a lot of you know this. Take care of the lower back. So the higher you take the thigh off the floor, the more potential strain there is in the lower back. So just take care there. Weight will go over to your opposite leg and let that return to the ground and just let the belly relax, the butt relax and breathe. So you might want to do it a second time. You might decide that was too much or it wasn't the right thing for you. If you're happy, then you do it again. Just go do two times on both sides. So a little bit of pressure down through the thigh to start off with and then release that thigh away from the floor and just see how that goes. You could take the knee away from the hip, so you're lengthening through the hips and the hip flexor. You see how that feels as you take the foot up still and then release it down. Brilliant. Return that leg to the floor, so you've got both legs extended now. Just see how it feels on the leg that you've worked on compared to the other leg. Have a little bit of a wobble from side to side if that ple is pleasant and relaxing. If it isn't, then don't. <laughs> Great. Okay. And then we're going to go to the side. Yes. Yeah? So we bend the other knee. So the foot heads towards the ceiling. We do our best to make sure our knees in line with our hips. So center of the knees on the ground, center of the thigh. And then we do these circles as we just unwind around the knee, around the hip, loosening and hydration around the hip point. Just loosen up a little bit there. This might feel exactly the same as the first leg, but it might feel tighter or looser. It might make more of an impact in your back or less of an impact. So this should, for most people, should is never a good word, for most people it's likely to be pretty happy for the lower back, but if it isn't, then make it a smaller movement or a calmer, softer movement. And again, looking for smooth circuits, just trying to smooth things out for any tension, tightness, stickiness, and revolve in the opposite direction with the foot and that lower leg. See how that feels, go in your speed, your rhythm, Softening, loosening, changing your position for your neck if you need to, if it's too much here. And then getting yourself back aligned. So just check you're on, the, on your knee, and on the center of your knee and on the center of your thigh. And then pressing down a little bit more with that thigh and then lifting the thigh off the floor as if someone's picking you up by the heel or the ankle. And just hover for a second and just feel the weight change, the length potentially through the hip flexor and lower down with control and relax for a second. Switch the butt off <laughs> and any other tension that's created for that movement. Second time, pressing down and then heel towards the sky a bit so you get that length. And, and this time, if you feel comfortable, just to take the knee away from the butt away from the sitting bones and just see if that lengthens a little bit more through the hip flexor and release down. Extend both legs down to the ground and again just have a rock and roll across the hips, across the thighs as you rock from side to side, just that rocking movement if it's comfortable. Maybe a quick out breath or a long out breath just to relax any tension in the neck or anywhere else higher in the body around the jaw. Hey, wonderful. So coming up now onto your forearms. Yeah, forearms. So elbows below your shoulder. Yeah, hopefully you can work from descriptions, if not from sight. <laughs> okay. And from here, with um, from here, what you're going to do, again, most of you know, you're going to bring your chin towards your chest, lift your belly, your pelvis off the floor. It's kind of like you're looking down towards your knees, so your thighs are mainly off the floor, 
and then lower your thigh, lower your pelvis, and just look forward for a moment. And then again, chin towards chest. So you have a round back, upper back at this stage as you look underneath the body. And then you can lower the pelvis, the hips back down, just look forward. One more, chin to chest, looking under the body. And then just get that sort of release for the lower back. Okay, so you can take the chest a little bit lower down. So you might want your elbows a little bit further forward. So you, you're a little bit more free in the belly and the rib cage coming more towards the floor. Look over your right shoulder, bring your right knee up as if it's working its way to your elbow and then push the foot back down to where it was before and extend the leg. Yeah, so most of you know this, look over the left shoulder, bring the left knee towards the left elbow, but not that high, it just comes to hip height. You're looking down towards your left knee and then push away to straighten up again. So two more times on each side. Yeah, looking over one shoulder, bring the knee up to about hip height and then pushing away. If you can push through your foot on the mat or whatever you've got, that's kind of more engaging, more engaging of the whole body. That's an option, but for some people that just creates cramp. So I think we've got one more on each side. So it's kind of like a crawl that gets nowhere or a climb that gets nowhere as we look from side to side. So again, we're just unraveling things a little bit, <laughs> doing something different for the body after those movements that we've just done. Okay, so from here, we're gonna come on to uh, hands and knees. So just take your hands down underneath your shoulders, press down, come up onto all fours. Okay, so you're going to need enough space to be able to take the foot out behind you, the legs out behind you. If you need to adjust, just, just <laughs> make that adjustment. Okay, so shoulders above wrists, fingers slightly separated so you get a little bit more sense of that support from the ground. Knees are at hip height. And just for a moment, just do, we'll just do two or three cat cows. So just round in the back. Uh, letting the crown of the, uh, sorry, the crown, yes, the crown of the head come towards the ground in a kind of cat pose, and then let the belly drop, chest come forward, look forward as the whole of the spine goes in the opposite direction. So it's just an extension and then a rounding. So just maybe three of those before we move on. Just again to get the back a little bit more freedom, the whole of the spine to take space it needs and then just come back to neutral okay so we're going to extend one leg behind us with the toes on the floor yeah so toes are on the floor one leg extended behind you then lift that leg up to hip height toes still facing down try and keep the same position for the thigh as you bend the knee so the sole of the foot goes towards the sky again press down through the hands Bring the belly in for a little bit of support, chest away from the ground. Extend the leg again away from you. Well done. And then just bring the knee towards the nose, nose towards the knee. So we're rounding the back like we did in cat a minute ago. And then extend the foot back to the floor. Heel can lengthen. Extend, the, uh, raise that leg off the floor so it's at hip height, toes down. And then just bend the knee. So the sole of the foot ends up towards, uh, facing towards the sky. And then bring the knee towards the nose. Round in the back. Both knees down now to go to the other side. If you need your wrist having a shake out, please do. Otherwise, extend the opposite leg, right with the toes on the floor, extend it into the heel if you can. From there, raise that leg to hip height, about hip height, and then bend that knee, yeah, so on the foot. So like we did earlier, you get that sense of length through the front of the hip, try and keep um, balance so you're not flopping over to one side or the other. Extend the leg again back so you've got straight leg, and then bring the knee towards the nose. And take the foot back, foot on the floor, extend, lift bend the knee, and then bring the knee towards the nose. 
both knees back to the floor. Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to come up to standing. I'm going to work our way up just briefly via um, downward dog. So you, I might disappear here, but I think you know more or less what I'm doing. So take your hands slightly further forward if you've got space, or take your knees slightly further back if, if that's more space to do so. Tuck your toes under, rock your shoulders forward to uh, your wrists, and then take your bum back towards your heels. Lengthen through the arms. Arms, uh, shoulders back over wrists. And this time as you go back, take the knees off the floor to go up to this triangular shape, downward dog. Keep your knees as bent as you want. Press a little bit through the hands and take your bum bones up towards the sky. So then lengthen one heel back and then the other heel back. You know what this kind of walk in the dog movement is, most of you. So one heel goes forward, six towards the floor, and then the other one does, like a walking exaggerated walking position without getting anywhere. Seeing how you feel on the backs of the legs now, getting those a little bit more freedom. Okay, brilliant. And then, I know you can't see me very well here, and then we're gonna walk the hands towards the feet to come to standing. So the hands just pad themselves back towards the feet, at the bottom down, and then use the legs to lengthen all the way up. And I'll just make my adjustments so you can see me. Okay, I need water, I'm talking too much. So have the um, block available, if you've forgotten where it was or you've thrown it or the dog's taking it off, just to reclaim it. So we, we won't have it instantly, but just so you know where it is, now we're into standing. Okay, folks. So just see how you are standing. Been a bit of a whirlwind from the floor, um, and then working our way up to standing. So we've done quite a lot of work around the centre and say trying to work, hopefully reasonably effectively at the front of the body, from thighs, hip flexors, psoas muscle, to just try and create a little bit more length, a little bit more space. So we might feel taller, we might not. <laughs> and just see what your sense is of the feet on the ground. So we'll get a little bit more steadiness before we uh, move into this week's challenge. So to do that, again, most of you are familiar, we're going to stand with our feet either hip distance or slightly wider apart. And we're going to allow the arms to come forward and back as we bend the knees and bend the hips. So we just get a little bit more grounded. So as we come down, we feel the feet more and as we come up we push from the feet so i know it feels all arms but try and pay attention more to the feet and the legs the knees bend and the hips bend to get you down and then the feet work to get you get you back up and just have a little bit more movement a bit more space for the breath the diaphragm the side body and if you were cool you hopefully warm up and if you're just being a bit stiff it's an opportunity to do something where you've just got momentum on your side, you've got a rhythm, and uh, just seeing how that feels to just get a little bit more movement in all the joints, have the whole body movement, working from the feet if you can. A couple more swings. <laughs> and, and we'll just let the arms kind of relax and release. Well done. Okay, let's go for the challenge. So hopefully you can see, I think we're going to need to just, because I'm going to go up a smidge here. So find the block or whatever you're going to use as your step. If you've got it, if you haven't, you'll improvise. That's going to go on the floor so you can step up to it. So you might want to face me, but I'm going to go sideways so I can hopefully indicate a little bit more what I'm doing. So I'm going to step up onto, I'm actually stepping up with my right foot, but up to you what you do, but it might make more sense if you can come onto your right foot onto the block or the support. Once you've arrived, just try and get a sense of length through the spine so that you're not collapsing down or falling forward and that you're not pushing into the back of your knee, that that's slight, that's soft. So you're actually using muscles rather than bone on bone and then allow the other leg that's dangling to sway back and forth from the hip. 
And often we keep it fairly limited in the movement. See if you can, you can take your hands to your pelvis if you want to, just to check that your back isn't being overly uh, going into a bow shape, a banana shape. So you might want to swing the leg a little bit higher, depending on how safe that feels. So sometimes you have to steady yourself. You need to find something in the room that's not moving, <laughs> else you'll lose your balance. So you're looking here to open up through the psoas, through the front of the hip flexor. So that's the back movement as the heel goes away and the leg swings. Okay, and then release the hands. And it could be like a walking movement. So as my left leg comes forward, my right arm comes forward. And that might give you a little bit more support in the movement, both in terms of being able to take legs slightly further forward, slightly further back. And it might help you also stand a little bit straighter. <laughs> oh, straight isn't a good word, but feel more of an upright movement. Okay, and then gently step back and step off. Okay, so we've done this kind of thing before, but we get it's more, it's a bit speedier, it's a bit more open with the leg swing. You might not see that well with the black background there, so but I think you've got the idea. So second side, and then we'll just do one more thing on this challenge. So stepping up on your second side, finding your balance, so you have the foot's off the floor, feeling like you're not closed in the front of the sternum, the front of the chest, that you actually do get a sense of length and lightness in the upper body, not pushing back in your, um, in your knee, and then get a swing going. You can start with your pelvis. So we're not looking to banana, in the lower back here yeah? so we're just keeping that in a reasonable place to be able to feel safe and then we move the leg we move the leg we move the leg and then we bring the arms in so opposite arm comes forward with opposite leg i hope that, that makes it easier for most of us to get into the swing to find a rhythm and to open up through that hip flexor so hopefully cats and dogs are not getting completely confused by what on earth you're doing here, if you've got cats and dogs or children, and that you're finding a spot in front of you that isn't moving. And you relax your shoulders, the whole movement feels as relaxing as you can make it. So although it's a balance, you're not thinking of the balance, you're thinking of the flow and the movement. Brill, and then step back, off. Land on both feet, you want to shake out, shake out, just to kind of mix things up a little bit. You'll feel really grounded probably now, a little bit of release through the hips. So I'll do my best to show you that I, every time I try this out to work perfectly, so I know it's not gonna work now. So the second stage of the challenge goes something like this. So that swing we're gonna use with the arms to coordinate it with the legs, but we're gonna be stepping on and off <laughs> with the back leg. Back leg will be going down and then coming up. So I'll try and show you first. So as I come forward with the front knee, which was the dangling knee, then I bring the opposite arm up and then I step back onto the ball of my back foot and then I come forward and then step back and then I come forward and then I step back. So opposite knee to opposite elbow comes forward. For me, left knee, right elbow, left knee, right elbow, left knee, right elbow. And again, how far you take the toes to the floor, the ball of the foot to the floor, will make it more tricky. You're looking for alignment if you can. But it's kind of like an exaggerated strange run. Yeah, so we're opening the back of the hip flexor as we, as we step back through a release of the knee and the front hip. So a couple more times if you can. If you've got into the swing, I don't look at you, that's half all over. And then we can step off. Yeah. So what you'll be maybe doing your challenge for yourself would be to do about that 20 times. Sometimes hard to count and keep your balance and keep your breath. So second side, stepping up. Opposite knee to opposite elbow bent, step back. I got that right. <laughs> and then come forward 
and then that's right. Okay, so opposite elbow to opposite knee, opposite elbow to opposite knee, opposite elbow to opposite knee, just taking the ball of the foot down and having kind of, you've got counterbalance going on here. So hopefully it's easier. The idea is, is not to think too much about the knee, but think about the push off from the foot. But we'll work maybe more with that next week, just really need to, next time, just need to get a sense of the flavor of the movement. If you're all wobbly, you're all wobbly. Yeah, sometimes that's the way of the world. So two more. And step off the world, step off the world. And clear the space from the block or whatever support you were, were using. Okay, so just going to do one more thing to finish. So we'll just take the legs wide. So I do mean pretty wide. <laughs> so inside leg measurement between the feet. Toes can go out, heels can come in slightly and just kind of sitting sitting down. So most of you again know where we're going here. Let the breath calm. It might just be my breath that's losing it slightly because I'm talking and moving. Arms come out to the side with the palms broadly facing each other, looseness in the wrists, looseness in the elbows, shoulders down. We can open up for a moment like we did at the beginning and look towards the sky. And then we bring the fingertips together, we round the back and we look down. Yeah, so a bit like cat cow again, a bit like the spinal movement we did from the beginning. So opening up, keeping the knees really bent and fingertips together, looking down, rounding the back, pelvis can tuck under slightly there. Opening up as you open through the chest, looking up, opening up. And one more time, as we kind of look down through the finger, through the gap between the fingers, opening up, and then just bring the feet together. Yeah, bring the feet together, heel toe, heel toe, see how you're doing. And just get your breath back, one hand on belly, one hand on chest for a moment. Just steady yourself. Feel the heartbeat maybe, if you're still kind of uh, moving quite fast there. Feel the breath in the belly, feel the length through the spine, feel the feet on the ground. Just rest the breath a little bit, so just allow that to settle. Ah, okay. So I hope that wasn't too speedy. I know I've thrown quite a lot at you tonight. So when you're ready, just releasing both arms, have a little bit of a shake out, just to loosen again, any tension that you might have. So you could choose to do that step up kind of movement as you challenge during the week after a run, um, or before a run actually, it's quite a good loosener. Um, but see how things go. So that's challenge number one, and we'll work